Good afternoon, everybody. Today is December the 15th, 2020. Welcome to the K9 Man Show, and I'm Hector Hernandez. And this is going to be a great topic on how to deactivate an aggressive dog. Very, very difficult for some people because they think like a human, and we need to think like a dog, believe it or not. Almost like culture diversity, right? You're going to someone else's world, and you're accepting it. And you're tolerating that to make you a better person. No different than culture diversity. We're going into a different world, a dog's world. Okay, so now i seen Dr. G in here, an orthodontist from um, DeWitt and Lansing. I'm glad you're watching, Dr. G. Ed, I appreciate that. Uh, Maria, Danielle, uh, Sherry, hi, waving back at you. Tina Loveless, hello. Uh, Chris, i seen you on here, Chris. Uh, Chris Carter, hello. Lori, we're, I'm working on our show for next week, Lori. I'm working on it. Next week is going to be on first aid. Next week's going to be on first aid. And then the following week is going to be on separation anxiety. I, um, again, I chart how many, how many times my flyers get downloaded on my, my, um, on my website. And last week, uh, separation anxiety and emotional dependency, those two flyers, got downloaded over 20,000 times. That's crazy. That's crazy how many times they got downloaded. So anyways, I'm going to be doing that. So very important. And I can see why. I can see why that's going to, you know, people want to know about separate anxiety. However, I'm going to dissect it a little bit better. But today is going to be about what? It's going to be about dog, how to deactivate a dog. I got to say hi to Jack and his dad, Kurt. If you're not watching, I know you're going to watch my replay. I appreciate you watching. Uh, Jack, I appreciate you being loyal to me. Um, I love seeing you again. I saw you with your grandfather, Jeff, the other day. It was nice to see you. So anyways, today is how to deactivate an aggressive dog. I got a lot of videos. I got a lot of videos to help you out. All right? Uh, there's nothing wrong with aggression, people. There is nothing wrong with aggression. It can work for you and against you. It can work for you and against you. This is why we need to teach our dogs morals. We need to teach them what's right and wrong. Because it's natural for them to be protective of themselves. It's natural for them to be protective of their property. It's natural for them to be protective of the person they love, which is their, home, which is their owners, which is the people in their circle that they're loyal to. That's natural. We bred him that way. We designed him that way. We made him that way. So how can we fault that? So to try to make a dog nice, it's going to be difficult for some dogs who are loyal. Some dogs are loyal to a fault. This is how you want your husband to be, right, ladies? <laughs> you, want your, you want your husband loyal to a fault. But some of those dogs are like that too. Anyways, so uh, a dog aggression, it's instinct for them to be aggressive. It can work for you and against you. Police departments love that part because why? Because it protects property, it protects themselves, and it protects the dog even in some cases. And they can, they're able to catch criminals with dog aggression. Here's how you can, a lot of times, police officers, I'll do seminar or they'll, they'll be there and they want to show me their dog, do the bite work. Listen, I'm not impressed with bite work. What I'm impressed with is how much control you have in the face of bite work. That's what I'm impressive about. Here's why. Because it's natural for a dog to bite. You even see little videos of eight, 10 week old dogs, of Belgian Malinois doing bite work already. It's natural for them. Hell, your dogs bite you naturally. So understand that people, it's natural. You wanna impress me? You show me some control in the face of obedience, excuse me, in the face of aggression. That's how you can impress somebody and how much control you have over your dog. And this is why I make videos of my dog doing bite work. I make videos of my dogs doing bite work because I have to, as a trainer, my dog is a reflection of my training. So what I put, as far as what I put in value in training, I have to show that. So let me show you a quick video of me and Malo doing some bite work and then show you that it can work to our advantage. There's nothing wrong with your dog being aggressive. We just need to manage and control it. That's what we need to do.
manage and control it. That is our objective. It works for us. No collar, no shock collar during aggression, and no collar at all on the, on the dog. Verbal off-leash control. My dog's not barking. He's nice and calm. I'm going to teach you how to get your dog nice and calm. Now, here's the very important thing. We have to know how to use the right method of training in order to get our dogs to be not reactive and then understand it also. There's a way to understand it. I'm going to dissect that today. I'm going to be talking fast. I'm going to give you a lot of good information today. And remember, this is just a touch of it. There's no question in my mind that maybe at four or five months from now or next year, I'll be doing another show about uh, dog reactivity. There's no question about that. But understand that. Now, look, look, look at the narrative around the country. The narrative around the country is to show, is to use treats with dog aggression. That's the narrative around the country. Here's an expert tip from a website from Fetch MD. This is an expert tip. Keep treats on hand during walks and offer one up before your dog lunges at the neighbor's pooch. Or throw something tasty into his bowl if your dog growls when you get close while he's eating. Let me tell you, if you're thinking like a human, that will work. If you're, if you're thinking like a dog, that will not work. Let me tell you why. Dogs are forward thinkers. If they think they're going to get a treat before they lunge, you're rewarding the behavior instead of extinguishing it. If you give a dog a treat before he growls at the bowl, you're rewarding the behavior instead of, instead of extinguishing it. If it was that easy, I wouldn't be doing dog aggression training. They would just look at that and they would do it. But why is it that we still have problems? Again, think about this. Thought experiments... Theory versus practice. This is why it's important. Think of something that you're going to do and then apply it and do it over and over and over until you get success. That's what I've done. This treat method works on dogs who are truly not aggressive. A dog may have a personal space that may, you may be okay with the treat. The, might, the dog just may need time to adjust. But it, it's not because it's dog reactive. It just, had, it just needed some time at that moment to adjust but it wasn't truly dog reactive. And in fact, if I get a German Shepherd who's not aggressive, there's something wrong with it. If I get a Rottweiler who's not predisposed to be aggressive, there's something wrong with it. Why? Because they're designed that way. Quit making it bad. Our culture can make it bad, though. Hell, our culture even accepts aggression, doesn't it? Look it. I'll give you, I'll give you a parallel. Boxing, UFC. Football, all that is an aggressive sport by definition. It's an aggressive sport. Aggression, dog aggression is very contagious. Football, all of that stuff is very contagious to the eye. It's, it's very seducive to the eye to see that aggression. It's not good for our soul, though. It's not good for us. I don't like to see two dogs fight, but it's contagious. You should, when I do protection work with some people, I see their, light, their eyes light up. I see their body posture. And I know I have to spend at least a few minutes telling them, look, it's contagious. It's not a good feeling to feel this way. you got to control and manage yourself in the face of this. So it's very, very important to understand that, you guys. Now, theory versus practice. Again, a lot of the stuff that you see on the Internet, they will tell you, but where's the video? Where's the video to support what you just said? I'm going to show you with video. I'm going to show you with video. Melinda Marlett, thank you for watching. Renee, Renee uh, Horton, you guys have to watch my interview with Renee Horton um, from Remax. It's on my, my Facebook and it's on YouTube. One of the best interviews I've done with somebody. Re Renee and I clicked really well, uh, re really well during an interview. Uh, I, hope to, I hope to do another one with you, Renee. Uh, Janella, thank you for watching. Uh, Rochelle, thank you for watching. Joanne, I'm glad you're here. We're communicating, but we're, uh, we're, we're here, though. Uh, Kevin, thank you for watching. Sean Pickford, thank you. Barb, thank you. You edited a few things here for me today. I appreciate that. Uh, Scott Reeb, thank you for watching. Bobby, thank you. Good afternoon to you, too, Laura. I appreciate that. Uh, Tracy Fernandez, thank you for watching. Alan, Alan, my brother from another mother, thank you for watching. 
Uh, Janet, hey, Hector, finally watching as it happens today. Good. They're a lot more entertaining, Janet, when you're watching them live than on my replay. Uh, Ann Mako, thank you for watching. This is a good one for you, Ann. This is a good one for you. Uh, Janet, thank you for watching again. Larry, I'm glad you're back there, my friend. I appreciate you. Uh, Jeff, Joy, thank you. Uh, let's see who else. I hope I didn't miss any. I think I saw Carrie on here. And let me get on with the show really quick, and then I'll come back to this. So here's another thing that we need to learn. Before our dogs get reactive, how about we find out what causes the reaction, the aggression, so we don't develop it? Wouldn't that be nice? And this is what I'm going to do today. It's sad that I have to talk to you about how to stop them as far as prevent it from happening. I want to teach you how to stop it all together, right from the get-go, right when they're puppies. Don't raise them to be reactive. Don't raise them to be aggressive towards people. So very important. Let me teach you that so we don't even have to, you don't even have to bring me a dog to my class about this. Save your money. Use it on something else. Don't use it on me to teach your dog to be, to be calm in the face of aggression. Save your money. I'm telling you right now. Save your money for that. Don't spend it on me. Let me teach you how to make sure that your dog doesn't bite anybody so your dog doesn't get in a fight before it happens. Very important. So let's, let's do this. Let's do this right now. Let me... And here it is. Your goal is to stop reactivity from developing all together. All together. These five tips. This is what I do, people. Listen, I'm not telling you anything that I don't do. And if you want to see if I'm right, look at my dog. He is a reflection of my training. I want you to look at my dog, and I want you to understand that what I'm telling you works. He's my he is my product of what these tips do. Number one, make a piece in their instinct priority. Dogs lead with instinct. They don't lead with emotions. Walking's great, but you got to find an outlet for their instinct. If you don't, it becomes destructive. And one of the, one of the things that are destructiveness is aggression. Is aggression. That's a destructive way to handle stress. If your dog's predisposed to handle stress with aggression, that's what you're going to get. So it's very important to appease their instinct. Number two, manage window outside. Stop the perimeter patrolling. Stop the perimeter patrolling. Now, this is what's huge. Number two is huge. My dogs don't look out the windows. My dogs don't look at people walking by or dogs walking by. Here's what happens. They look at the person, they're barking, going crazy. The person walks away with the dog or, or without a dog. Now the dog starts thinking that he can scare people away. That's where the aggression starts to happen. I had a seven month old shepherd in last week, seven month, extremely reactive towards dogs and people seven months. He learned it from looking out the window. They sent me a text a week later, which was this week. The dog is about 90% fixed just from not letting them look out the window. Cover the windows with window film. Here's the second one. And number two, play outside, rest inside. These dogs need a what? They need an off switch. They need an off switch from their mental. So I play with my dogs outside in the house. They're chewing on a bone or they're having fun as far as with a bone, but not with a toy. That's for outside. Manage your windows and outside perimeter patrolling, meaning when, you're, when they're outside, don't allow them to roam free barking at every person that walks by. If they're on an underground fence, don't have it close to the sidewalk. Have it farther away in the middle or don't even have it in the front. Have it just in the back. That would be my, my perfect world. Have them just in the back. Cover the windows with window film. Very important. Number three, on the leash without pressure. Anything on their neck, their brain tells them that either two things, either they're out of control and they get really elevated or you're holding them back from a fight. This is why a lot of the dogs who come to me, they're trained but they're not obedient. They're trained with the treat. They look very good with the treat. They're doing every command until another dog comes by. And then they could have learned it through looking out the window or they want to defend themselves or they feel cornered on the leash. 
They feel cornered. Remember, on a leash, just like this picture, the dog is tied up. The dog, please. Wait a minute. Let's go back. Let's go back to number three. Number three, off-leash obedience. Off-leash obedience is very important to understand. You want off-leash obedience so there is no pressure on their neck. You want off-leash obedience so you got control. Now, the bad thing about off-leash obedience is your number one enemy is going to be an untrained dog. Your number one enemy is going to be an uncontrolled environment. So, but off-leash obedience gets you that off-leash control that also gets you the submission that you need. That also gets you the submission that you need. Number four, no hands on. Why? Because hands are weapons. I can't tell you how many dogs come to me, and as soon as they look at my hands and look at me, they go after me. And I, here's, what I, here's, how, here's how I prove my point to the owners. I will hold my hand up and move it side to side, and guess what the dogs look at more than, my, than me? They look at my hand. They're waiting for me to hurt them with their hand because they think hands are weapons. They're waiting for me to hurt them because they think hands are weapons. You guys, no hands on. Please, we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Yelling. Yelling also wires the dog. It wires them dog with stress. Some dogs, it wires them with submissive stress. Some dogs, it wires them with aggression stress. It doesn't matter. It's still stress that can accumulate. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. No yelling. Talk in a normal voice. You're going to see some off-leash dogs here pretty soon that we went from aggression to submission. The owners are not yelling. The owners are talking. Number five, exposure instead of socializing. Dogs need to see more than they need to be touched. They need to see. This is a very good thing for a service dog when they're puppies. They bring them to places. They don't let everybody touch them. They don't let the dogs go see everybody. No, their job is to expose them, not over-socialize them. Over-socialize, you teach them to jump. Over-socialize, teach them to get excited. I want them nice and calm so they can think in the face of that. That's what I want. Very, very important. That's what I want. This is how you stop it. This is how, when you get a puppy, do these five things so you don't have aggression when they get older. Appeasing their instinct doesn't mean taking them to the dog park where they get bullied and then they get scared of dogs and they feel cornered. You don't want to do that. This, you don't, this is how you stop it. If I could teach everybody just this, with a dog who's predisposed to be aggressive, you won't have a problem when they get older. You won't. As they get older. All right, let me see what I got here if I got any questions. Uh, Darcy, thank you for watching. Kelly Grove, thank you. Amy, thank you. Uh, Amy, uh, well, I know it's not rhetoric, but I'm going to call you rhetoric anyways. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, who else do I got here? Uh, Larry, I already said hi to you. Sean, Sean uh, uh, Pickford, thank you. Uh, Joanne Pitcher, thank you for watching. Johnny, thank you. Ruth, we tried everything with all our dogs, and he always growls and bites the man I am with. He is like protecting me. All right, Ruth. Now, if he's protecting you, your job is to teach him that you don't need protection. How do you do that? You make him submissive. You make him submissive. And I'm going to show you what submission looks like. Because right now, some dogs have a duty to protect you if they think you're weak. They have a duty to protect you if they think you're weak. It's love. It's part. We've even... No, don't use a shot collar. Don't use a shot. We try everything. Uh, no, no, none of those. Don't do the rolling paper. Don't do the squirt bottle. Uh, we don't know what to do. Ruth, don't do any of that. I'm, let's talk about this, Ruth. Your dog loves you so much that he's willing to protect you. Protection is love. Protection is love. Remember that. We'll talk about this, uh, Ruth. Uh, that's exactly what I was doing with Murdoch. Yes, Rochelle, I remember that. You were loving him too much. And he was mistaking your kindness for weakness, and then he had a duty to protect you. Listen to that. Pay attention to that. He's mistaking your kindness for weakness. He thinks he has a duty to protect you because he loves you. That's a normal for a dog. That's their job. That's their job. Uh, all right, Ruth, I'm glad you're back. Uh, Tony, thank you for watching. No wonder he kept on lunging. Yes, of course. Then, because the lunging, we had to do off-leash, Rochelle. For the lunch, we had to do Rochelle. Tori, thank you for watching. Uh, be careful when you're working, though, but I'm glad you're watching. Yasha, 
I know you can contest what I'm going to be telling today, Rasha, that it works. I know you can because we had a drastic change with your dog. Uh, Andy Powers, thank you for watching. Tara, thank you. Uh, Brandy, thank you again. Uh, Kimberly, I'm glad you're here. I remember you, Kimberly. Uh, Samantha Morris, thank you. Uh, Vicki Roberts has a, has, a, has a question. We live in a country. Do we have to cover windows because of squirrels, deers? Only Vicki, good question. So Vicki asks, we live in a country. Do we have to cover windows because of squirrels and deers and feral cats? Um, if it becomes impulsive, uh, Vicky, where they're going crazy all the time, then yes. And here's why. Because they may not be reactive towards people or dogs, but they're going to be very stressed out and impulsive outside. They're going to be very stressed out and impulsive. What do you mean by stress? What I mean by stress, mental stress of their body, neck and shoulders. They're barking, going crazy. The, the stress develops around their neck. Uh, Leslie, thank you for watching. Uh, Kelly Jenkins, thank you for watching. And Trudy Taunton. So that's why. That's why. All right, let's go on to um, the window aggression. Let's talk about window aggression. This is a dog who got window aggression. He's pumping up. He's going crazy. It's very important to stop that from happening. Great super dog that came to me. Super dog. And then you notice in the beginning, he, he was pumped up. His body was curled in. Now, I knew that this dog's body was curled in, and also his back end was really tight from jumping up while he was barking out the window. And I told her that before she told me that. I told her the things that she needed to know that was causing that before she told me. We massaged the dog. We relaxed the dog. Now, this aggression developed through the window. It didn't develop because he didn't like people or hands. He developed it because he looked at people out the window and he went crazy after them. So it's very important to stop that window. This dog almost went through a window, barking, going crazy. Look at the submission that we want. The paw coming up, the head coming down. I wanted to show, this was just last week, by the way. I wanted to show a video. You've seen the beginning, now you see the end. There is no stress around their back. There is no stress around their neck. Look at my how to decompress a, a dog physically to fix that. Look at how, de how to decompress a dog physically to fix that. It is very important. All that aggression developed through the window. He was great. He just, when he saw somebody out the window, he would go crazy. Now, that could also be a dog. That you, you can teach a dog dog reactivity, dog aggression through a window. Stop that. Stop it. Easy fix. When they're little and they're predisposed to handle stress with aggression, they shouldn't look out the window. Why? Because if they're predisposed to handle stress with aggression, if they get stressed, they become aggressive. You give them an on and off switch. All right? Let's see if I have any questions here. So just the window alone caused the dog to do that. Just the window alone caused the dog to do that. Next video. Let's go to the next video. Uh, I got to switch pages here. Hold on a minute. So off leash. Off leash is what you want. Off leash so the dog is free from any, any pressure around their neck, free from any jerks that they're going to anticipate. No yelling. Look at her. She was nice and calm. Here's another dog. Now, this dog is over, clearly over 100 pounds, people. So, aggression? Aggression towards me? Same thing would be aggressive towards another dog. It'd be no different. Then, submission. Then, submission. Ag what's the opposite of aggression? Submission. The opposite of aggression is submission. Now, these two videos that you just saw, and you're going to see a few more, these just happened. These, they, they literally just changed within an hour. Now, look at my net there. You see my net? This dog went over it to, tie, to try to attack me. He tried to go over it, and he did to try to attack me. And this handler did an excellent job of listening to me, especially in the face of aggression. The chair to the right, I used the chair to protect myself. And the owner was on, on point on how to train a dog when I was telling him. He was excellent at what he did. Thank goodness he was. 
So we went from aggression to submission. People think, oh, he looks like you beat him. He's submissive. He respects you. He respects authority. The person who's given the commands is the one who has authority. This is not something that you want to give a treat to. This dog is clearly over 100 pounds. He can cause so much damage in such a short amount of time. We don't take that risk. Again, this is a dog who learned it within an hour and a half. I'm pretty sure. I got the full video. I used the chair just in case. And if you can read my body language, my back was killing me that day, but I had to save this dog. My back was killing me that day. I used a chair in case he came in front of me to block him, but reading his body language, he was fine, mouth open, relaxed. I was good with that. I was good with that. And now the dog went from what? From aggressive to submissive. And now I put the, hat, the, put the chair down and I use my hat. The dog can care less about me now. The dog can care less about me now. And then we're go I'm going to leave so you know it's not fear aggression. His mouth is open. He's relaxed. That's normal body language. He's resting. Instead of destructive behavior with the aggression, he's resting now. All right? Very important. Let me see what I got here for any questions. How do you stop a dog from barking when you're slowed down in the car? Now, Leslie, the barking in the car is a byproduct of two things. One, windows in the house. Two, not an outlet. If he doesn't have an outlet for his energy. Now, it could be three. It could be not setting boundaries. This is where you need submission. This is where you need off-leash. One of the things I see a lot, especially in competitions, I see a lot of protection dogs in crates in their cars. What the hell is a dog going to do in the crate when somebody's robbing you or even threatening you? What are you going to do? Hold on. I got to get my dog out. Time and circumstances don't permit you to get the dog out. You got to have them loose. So even with a protection dog, Leslie, they have to learn the same thing, to be calm, to be relaxed, give a mental outlet and maybe physical. Stop, let them look out the window. And then you got off leash control. Courtney, thank you for watching. Joanne, how do I know if my dog is nervous, fearful, and not reactive? How do, okay, Joanne, this is why. Very good question. Joanne says this. How do I know if my dog is nervous, fearful, or not reactive? Behind a little aggression, behind any aggression is a little bit of fear, is a little bit of nervousness. It's no different than with humans. No different than with humans. This is why you needed to have an outlet. This is why you need to decompress them and not get them so crazy. So go back to my body language pages, decoding body language, and ascertain if your dog is a little bit fearful and nervous. I'll help you out a little bit. Fearful body language, eyes bulging out, body compacted, right? Nervousness, uh, the, their, their heart rate's a little higher. They start to salivate a little bit more. Uh, and most likely it's a little bit of both could be even be anxiety it could be a little bit of all three but that's just an understanding that's not an excuse you still need to train the dog to be off leash control in the face of that you still need to manage your dog indoors and outdoors like the th five things that i told you about in the beginning uh, michael bucks correct me if i'm wrong but you only need to cover the windows as high as uh, very good mike yes sir thank you for saying that mike you only need to cover the windows up to where the dog can see or prevent the dog from even looking out the window by blocking it off, maybe with a baby gate or just not allowing the dog to go in the front. Or, or, so closing the door or something like that. Uh, Sherry, uh, Nala controls the perimeter of the backyard. She, as long as she's not going crazy and being aggressive, Sherry, you're good. She runs last with a toy in her mouth. The toy in her mouth is a way to appease her mouth, appease her instinct. That's a good way instead of barking. That's a good way instead of biting even. But you don't want her patrolling. You got to stop that patrolling because that turns into nervous behavior, going back and forth. That turns into nervous behavior. You don't want any of that. Uh, Leslie, he doesn't want me to leave him. Okay, then you got to watch my, my show in a few weeks on emotionally, how to, how to uh, help an emotionally dependent dog and or separation anxiety. And I'll be able to ascertain which one of each based on body language. You'll be able to ascertain, excuse me, which one it is. Um, Alfred, how do you correct a dog on dog aggression? You don't correct a dog with dog aggression. You manage it. If you correct the dog when he's aggressive, you're, into a, you're fighting a battle of wills. If you correct them when they're uh, growling, you stop the growling. 
Uh, Alfred, if you, you've got a battle of wills. What you want to do is you want to re- gain submission and control, not in the face of aggression. You want to do it before. Create the relationship before the issue develops. That's what you want to do. In the face of aggression, it's too late. You're fighting a battle of wills. You're not going to win. You could use a shock collar and do all of that, but all you're doing is creating a battle of wills. Have fun with that. Uh, hey, Joe, thank you for watching. I appreciate that. Stacy Fernandez, thank you for watching. I'm glad you're here. Man, I love looking at your family pictures. You, every time I look at your family pictures, Stacy, I smile. It's a good feeling to have. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for doing that. Teresa, thank you for watching. Melinda, I think he meant dog on dog. Uh, you don't want to do that on dog on dog. Even, e- even in the face of dog on dog, Melinda, you don't want to correct. It's too late by then. It's too late by then. Your worst enemy is going to be an untrained dog. In some cases, your dog could have a personal space and may, want an un- may, may not want another dog to come near them. So if, you, if your dog has a personal space, then identify your dog's threshold. My dog has a personal space, Ma- Malo. He doesn't want a dog that he doesn't know to rush up on him. I got a personal space, damn it. So it's it, very important to understand your, dog, uh, understand your dog's threshold. If your, dog, if your dog's dog reactive because another dog walks by right next to him and tries to smell him, maybe your dog has a personal space. He wasn't doing anything before the dog came up on him. So maybe it was a dog who doesn't know boundaries. Maybe it's an it's a owner who doesn't control their dog. That's the problem, not your dog. Maybe it's their dog. So very important. Let me show you another. Let me show you another uh, video to help you here. Dog aggression to submission. Look how animated this dog is on a leash. Do I want to correct them now? No, whether it's a dog or a person, I don't want to correct them. You don't want to do that at that point. It's too late at that point. So you went from aggression to submission. You want that behavior. You want the head to come down. And then even then, let's say it was dog reactivity. You still got to control the other dog than not to rush up on your dog. Come on, people. I could have my dog completely under control and another dog just run on him and go after him. What am I going to do? That's my dog's not dog reactive. My dog's defending himself at that point. He's defending himself. He's defending his property. And he's defending his owner. That, that's what you want to do. You don't want to correct them in the face of that. You want to gain the relationship before. You want to gain submission and control before the issues occur. You don't want to fix the problem when the problem's already there. Hell, we don't want to do that with us, right? We have a communication problem with our spouse. We don't want to fix it right there with our spouse. We want to, we want to learn something outside of that, meaning, meaning do some edu- educate yourself outside of that and then come back and then fix your problem. You don't want to do that right now with your dog. Uh, let's see here. I got to be careful with the questions because they could take too much of my time. Back, I live in a country. If a block, I see a view, it won't be able to alert us if someone is outside. You're right. Uh, you want the dog to bark. This is, what's, this is where it works for you and not against you, Vicky. This is why you need to manage the dog. Now, there's people that can come on your property without your permission. Remember that. So it could set you up for that too. So be careful with that. Uh, uh, this is why it works for you and against you. I hope Perez, thank you for watching. Uh, Brian Woodward, thank you for watching. Lisa, thank you for watching. I know you miss me, Lisa. Lisa's my ex-wife's best friend, and she's my friend too. Uh, anyways, uh, Rochelle, I have a question. Before we brought Murdoch, you, he would really get pumped up at the window. Then after you, then after you brought him, he, he doesn't at all. Yes, very important. He only sits at the window and watches. Well, if that's the case, if you saw that drastic of a change, Rochelle, which I, don't, I usually don't see that drastic or rechain. Uh, uh, your issue wasn't the window then. Your issue was management. And your issue was management and him being overprotective of you. It wasn't the window. So then you don't have to cover the window. It, he, he may develop that as he gets older, but I'm glad you said that because just like the dog developed it through the window with the other video, your dog developed it because he thought you were weak, so he protected you. We fixed that, then you don't need to cover the window. Oh, I'm glad you said that. All right. Lisa Carpenter, uh, I'm glad you're on. I miss you guys, too. I, I miss your sons. You tell him I said hi. And your husband, too. I hope he feels better. hope he's feeling better. 
So that, that's what I mean by aggression. Fix the problem and then address the problem. Get submission, get control, and then go back and test what you've done. Then go back and test what you've done. You guys, I do it in my class on one-on-one, -on -one, or even in, my, uh, even in my basic obedience, we do that. It, 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 can, it can happen. All right, let's go to the next video. Here's a, here's a dog that would bring you chills. Great Dane. Look how he's being held back from a fight, isn't he? He's being held back. You got a harness on him, and he's being held back. Hold, hold the person that's aggressive back. What's he do? He gets aggressive. 45 minutes later, off leash, training tools, nylon braided collar, choke chain, over the Adam's apple, behind the ears, and we made him do the obedience. When I say sit, I mean sit. When I say down, ah, the pressure down. We're going to talk about the pressure down next. This is very important. So, Ralph, the, the, I'm going to teach you this is very important. This, you don't correct the dog. You relax him when he's aggressive. And I'm going to talk about that. A vital mistake a lot of people make. So, we went from aggression to submission with another dog. This isn't a thought experiment. I've already showed you, I don't know how many videos, three or four, that this method works. Different breed, different temperament of dogs, different owners. This dog's still a little confused, right? When I touch him, his mouth closed, but then he relaxed really quick. So his issue was being overprotective too, uh, uh, Rochelle, just like with yours. So we taught him that owners are not weak. I got this. I got this. I don't need you to overprotect me. You love me too much. You can't get a PPO on your dog, personal protection order. He loves you with, with aggression. That's not good. That's not good because now you, it's gonna, you got liability if it's not under control. Liability if it's not under control. Uh, let's see here. Margo, thank you for watching. Uh, Sherry, can you explain how to gain submission and the best time to work on that? The best time to work on that, uh, we're going to talk about how to get a dog to respect you in a minute here. Respect. We're going to talk about that, Sherry. Because dogs, dogs respect you differently. We're going to talk about that. So one of the things, Sherry, to get a dog submissive is to stop using treats. I'm going I'm to get animated because it makes me mad. Stop using treats to teach the dogs down. Stop it. It makes them look mechanical, but it doesn't relax them to the point where you need to relax them. It is imperative to teach the pressure down. You guys are messing things up when you do that. When you use a treat, you, they just look like they're down. But how do you teach submission then? When a dog feels tight and he's aggressive, how do you get him to relax with the pressure down? You get him to relax with the pressure down. Here's Mr. Jackson from Jackson Kennels in Lansing, Michigan. You want to talk about some uh, Presso Canaries that are very tough? Woo! I, I got a few videos of him already doing bite work. So we switch hands, we put pressure on the back, and down. So what happens, what you're doing with the pressure down, I'm going to replay that again so I can explain it because it's a short video, but, it, but it's, it's compacted with a lot of information. It, it's compacted with a lot of information. So what happens with a pressure down is the dog is tight. His neck, his shoulders are really tight in the face of aggression. How do you relax him if you don't do the pressure down? You want to use a treat? Go ahead. Use a treat to make him down. Now you could be rewarding the behavior. This is extremely vital. And a lot of trainers, since they don't know how to, how to use the pressure down, this is why they can't get submission, Sherry. So when the dog is tight, make him lay down. Teach him what pressure means. Now, most aggressive dogs who handle stress with aggression, their brain tells them that when I feel pressure to be aggressive, we have to switch that over to when you feel pressure, feel submission. When you feel pressure, be submissive. That's what we want to teach them. So it's very important to do that. The pressure down. The pressure down. Let's, let's review that again. For some reason, it's not coming back on. 
It's almost like I played you once. I don't need to play you again. All right, you get it, though. Go back in my replay. The dog is tight, body tight. It's got to relax. So I'm putting the pressure straight down. With the other hand, I'm pushing him down. And as soon as he lays down, I have him step on the leash close to the buckle. Why do I have him do that? If the dog gets up, he corrects himself. If the dog gets up, he corrects himself. So this is where your, their brain tells them that when they feel pressured to relax, when they feel pressure to relax, yes, you're going to still struggle with, uh, with, with that dog because of because his brain. Now, you could be teaching the opposite when they're looking out the window, when they feel pressure to tighten up. I want to make them feel pressure and relax with the pressure down, with the pressure down. He's, uh, he can still jump a fence. Yeah, we got to do that submission. We afraid of attacking them. You got to get him to relax, Tori, in the face of another dog. He's got to relax. If he can't relax, the best time to do this, Sherry, is between a male, between five to eight months, females, between six to eight months. Excuse me. A male between um, five to ten months, a female between uh, five to six. Wait a minute. Yeah, five to eight months. Excuse me. Yeah, five to eight months for a female. Um, their brain is not designed to be aggressive at that age. So you teach them that when they feel when they feel pressure to relax, when they start their instincts surface, they already know that concept. But if they're looking out the window, and they're aggressive out the window, and you're not giving them an outlet for their stress, have fun with that. This is why it's important to do those top five to relax your dog, so you can stop the dog. Uh, reaction. You can stop the dog aggression. It's more managing and not letting that issue develop. Cash is starting to alert when people come to the door. When we close out, yes, which I want once. I know a person's safe, but I'll put him down the crate. Yes, yes. Um, if you want the dog to know that you got control, call him to you and make him down and make him stay. And then look at his body language. Is his mouth open? Is he relaxed like you're seeing in his videos? Is his uh, mouth open and closing and relaxed? Good. I'm good. Come on in. Oh, his mouth is closed. He's, he, 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 for some reason, he, he's, look, he's not ready for somebody just to walk in. Maybe I got to manage him a little better. You're right, Kelly. That's why you look at body language. Too many people use treats for the down. This is the number one thing I get. I'm telling you. Number one thing I get from people when they, when they talk about dog aggression. My dog's trained already, Hector. He already sits, stayed down, comes in heels, but he's still aggressive. Uh, your treats are not working then. Your treats are making him look like he's obedience trained, but he's not. Stop using treats. Stop it all together. Follow through with your commands without treats. If you say sit, make him do it. If you say stay, make him do it. If you stay down, make him do it. That's it. You teach him that when you say something, you mean it. Without anger, with follow through. With follow through. Okay, very, very important. So no leash walking until the dog is calm. Now look, a lot of the times people come to me, oh, now I can go walking after you teach this, Hector. No, 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 you can't. We got him to stop being aggressive towards people or dogs. We got him off leash train. Now, without dogs being around and people that be around, teach him not to pull. Teach him not to pull and get him submissive when you're walking. If you go right to leash aggression, um, excuse me, leash walking, and you haven't done enough of the deactivating process, you're still going to get a dog who through, who through habit is going to react. So you get them to play a lot. You get cover the windows. Then you can start walking after a couple weeks. Yes, a couple weeks sometimes. You, leash reactivity, they need to break the habit. This is a bad habit. The leash goes on, goes on my neck, goes on, and, and then as soon as something goes on my neck, I'm going to be aggressive. That's the habit that you're trying to break. So you don't want to break that habit. You don't want to keep injecting them with that stress so they redevelop it. You don't want to do that. Give them time. So what you want to do is decompress them with number one. Remember with number one, uh, decompress them with a mental outlet. And then number two was what? Make them submissive. So start doing those five things before you get your dog back on the leash and, and reprogram him. Don't think once we do this, this show, once we do the one-on-one, -on -one, that he's going to be fixed. In a lot of cases, they have to go back and do it again. They have to go back and do it again, again, and again to teach him a habit. You're creating a new habit to do that. So, so this is why it's important to do that. 
the pressure down. And definitely no hands on. Don't use your hands. Stop using your hands. Thank you for watching, uh, Roseanne. Thank you for watching, Janet. I'll, I'll read your question in a minute. No hands on. Look at what the hands do. Hands teach them the hands are weapons. Hands can cause pain, force them to comply. You don't want to gain submission using your hands. Stop putting them on their back, damn it. Stop putting them on their side and relaxing them. All that's doing is teaching them that the hands are making them submit. You don't want to do that. You're, you're, the dogs see people as weapons, and they become aggressive towards people. I see puppies that way. I've seen puppies that don't want to come near anybody because they think they're going to get hurt with their hands. Overcorrect and lead to phantom feelings. Bully dog temperament. They learn, hey, they love you going hands on. Dynamic, uh, you go really fast, correct the dog, creates anxiety. Your goal is completely off leash. No rough play, no slap boxing. That teaches them the hands of weapons. That teaches dogs where to bite. No scruff correction, no muscle grabbing, no putting your finger in your mouth. Stop doing that. All that teaches that hands are weapons. All that teaches them that hands are weapons. Stop doing that. Uh, let's read this here. Becca, I think I, I'm glad you, came, you stepped in, Becca. We got about 15, 20 more minutes, but at least you came on. Austin, boy, we had a good session with your dog. I remember you, Austin. Uh, sir, by the way. Uh, let's see, Janet. Uh, quarantined uh, has turned us into dogs. Yes, uh, we roam. <laughs> it could. We roam the house all day, look for food. Yes, it could. This is why you, you need to have a mental outlet, Janet, so we don't turn into that. You're right. We need a mental outlet. We want to uh, communicate. We want to talk. We want to do that stuff. Uh, Carrie, I'm confused. The example was showing your hands to the apply. Yes. Now, now with the hands... What I'm doing there, uh, Carrie, very good question, good parallel. Carrie, I know you're a critical thinker because you're a scientist, so you're right. So what happens, Carrie, I'm using the leash, but my hands are not causing pain. Now, here's the good thing about the pressure down, Carrie. Once the dog is down, you step on the lead, now your hands are not holding him down, it's your foot. And now the dog learns it. If he comes up, he corrects himself. You stop all pressure when the dog relaxes. But you don't want to go heavy handed. I wouldn't want to grab the dog and flip him on his back. I, the dog sees me with the pressure on the leash and I go down. Now, in some cases, Carrie, you bring a good point because you are. In some cases, Carrie, some dogs already see hands as weapon. I have to go right to off leash. And we're going to talk about that when I do my off leash show. So in some cases, you can't use your hands. You just have to use your foot. In some cases, you got to go skip the down command and go right to off leash. So some of police dogs that, I, that, I come, that come to me for, for problem solving, we don't, if they don't want to release, we don't do release. We don't do bite work. We do the down command. We get them submissive. We get them submissive off leash. Then we do the bite work, and the dog comes right back to them. So anyways, to go back on your thing with the hands, yes, you're using hands, but you're not causing pain to the dog. You're just, it's called pressure down. Now, once they're down, no pressure, no hands. Hell, you could even praise the dog and soothe them with your hands at that point to teach him that. Very good critical thinking uh, question, uh, Carrie. Uh, someone else asked above how the dog, how about the dog with a head halter? You don't do that with a head halter. You could if they're submissive, but if you're forcing a dog to down with a head halter, don't do it. Go, to, go back to your, either your nylon collar or a star mark and make them, or even a flat collar and just make them down and just make them down, all right? That's going to be my next thing here. Uh, all right, let's, the next thing is going to be how do you teach a dog respect, Hector? Let's talk about that. How do you teach a dog respect? Now, you know, when I, when, when I used to do my motivational speaking for juvenile offenders, uh, Mike Devlin got me started with that. Uh, probably one of my first and most motivating talks uh, to uh, juvenile offenders is how to teach them respect. Um, it's easier with humans, but let me tell you with dogs, you have to show them. Let me tell you how. Respect, all right, respect. Look at this, respect. Obedience versus training. You must gain submission, projecting respect. You must gain submission, 
you're not going to get respect if you don't have submission. Now, some dogs are naturally submissive. You're sensitive, meek, and even some companion dogs. They're naturally submissive. You don't have to do the pressure down. You don't have to take them down and, and do all of that. You don't even have to do off-leash. They're naturally submissive. So you don't have to. They're already obedience. But by definition, they're already obedience. All right? But you got, you can't, you're not going to gain submission with a dog who's predisposed to handle stress with aggression and use treats. You're not going to do it. Theory versus practice. Theory versus practice. And to even trump that, empirical knowledge. Empirical knowledge with evidence of videos of over and over. Uh, no arguing, saying the command once or twice and follow through. Yes, once or twice and follow through. So if you say it over and over again, you're arguing with them without follow through. If I say sit, I'm going to give my dog time to process it, and then I'm going to make him do it without a treat. I'm just going to make him do it. Now, when I say down, he doesn't do it. I'm just going to make him do it with the pressure down. I'm not arguing with you. You're just going to do it. You're just going to do it. Now, if you think that treats do this, then prove to me. Show me a video of a dog who's very aggressive and then afterwards is not. Prove it to me. Prove, prove to me that I'm wrong. Prove to me that I'm wrong. Now, show me what the dog's like I showed you. Dog aggressive. I mean, they're lunging, going crazy. And then use treats to get them not to be protective. Control manipulation. Control manipulation. Some of these dogs will manipulate you over and over. They'll bark in your face to get you to play. This is why you don't play in the house. This is why you have an off switch in the house. You have an on switch outside. You control the manipulations. Some dogs will manipulate you over and over with their hands, paws constantly. They think that they trained you. Herding dogs will manipulate you to move and herd you around the house. That means they have control over you. This is why when we do off leash with herding dogs, I have you walk a straight line, not, not have the dog tell you where you go. You lose respect with threats, meaning if you tell a dog no and you say no, 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 no over and over again and maybe walk up to him and pretend you're going to grab him and then he listens or she listens and then you walk back, those are threats. You lose respect that way. You project respect with follow through. Come on, people, we do that with our kids too. If I tell my kid I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. I'm going to follow through. You love them. There's nothing wrong with that. You lose respect with threats. Don't do that. Don't use your hands. Don't argue with the dog. You say something, you do it. You tell them down, you make them do it. Now, with, again, with the dogs who are meek and sensitive, you don't need to worry about this. You got respect already with the meek and sensitive and companion dog. You got it already. Now, do that with the strong-willed dog and see what happens. Do, the strong, do treats with a strong-willed dog and see what happens, and then have them become aggressive and use treats and see what happens. Quit, quit doing these thought experiments that are out there. I'm showing you with dog aggression how to do it. A lot of the reality shows, all they do is address the training and they make it look good. They don't address how to mentally and physically decompress a dog. They don't address how to manage the dog inside and outside. They don't address how to appease your dog's instinct. Come on, you guys. That's all part of dog reactivity. That's all part of dog aggression. It's not that simple. But you know what you need to know so it doesn't happen is how to stop it. You can stop it by the five things that I spoke about initially. You can do that. The five things, appeasing their instinct, manage them in the window outside, unleash pressure, neck pressure, off-leash obedience, no hands-on, exposure instead of over-socializing. Very important. That's how you stop it. That's how you stop it. Uh, Sarah, thank you for watching. Tanya, I'm so looking forward to Thursday. Me too there, Tanya. Uh, May, thank you for watching. I'm not even going to say your last name, May. I don't want to slaughter it. How about May J? Thank you for watching. Uh, Nicole, thank you for watching. Nicole Jared. Uh, let's see who else. I hope I didn't miss any. Brooke Baker, thank you for watching. Uh, let's see here. Vicky, we have to we have to walk our dog on a leash to a fence yard to play. Uh, yes, but if the dog's pulling going crazy, then you got something to work on. Then you work on your obedience. You work on your leash control. Remember, if a dog's aggressive and you have leash pressure, 
he's going to pull. And when he pulls, he could be out of control or feel cornered. If he feels cornered, he's going to lash out. If he's got a personal space and he feels cornered, he's going to lash out. This is why now some people want to use treats. I, I, I know one trainer who you get dog reactive. Everybody gives a dog a treat. But the dog, if you don't look at the body language, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. We have, we have liability trainers. If you set that owner up, to, if you tell an owner to go do something and he gets bit, have fun with that. Have fun with that. They have recourse. You put him in a position to be injured. You have recourse. Be careful with that. I know another trainer with dog aggressive. He, he, he allows other, hand, other people to handle that dog. Watch out. Watch out. Just a matter of time. We're held. That's why I'm hoping that they watch this, this video. That's why I'm hoping. It's a liability. I'm hoping they watch my last week replay for that reason. Very, very important. Don't want us to get, don't want us to get sued. Sherry, uh, follow through when off leash. Do you mean command by grabbing the collar in order to follow through? No. You, you make him do the command. You make him do the command. So, uh, yes, Sherry, yes. Yes, I see what you're alluding to. Yes, and those dogs, Sherry, they have a collar on with a tagline. Remember, for off leash, they have a tagline, and you grab the tagline, and you make them do it. Without anger, you just make them do it. Nothing wrong with that. Now, for jumping, remember to control the other person. The other person could be setting your dog up to fail from jumping. Or in, in dog, uh, dog aggression, listen, I don't walk up to the dog if a dog's aggressive and get bit. I'm gonna, if I see a dog who's reactive, I'm going to figure out his threshold, and then I'm going to find out if he's aggressive because of not playing with an outlet. I'm going to find out if he's, not, if he's aggressive towards the window, if it's just visual, and then I'm going to find out if he's truly protective of the owner. Remember, you remember, protecting themselves, protecting their property, and protecting the owner. Look at those three things to determine which one it is. If it's protecting themselves, I'm going to find out my dog's threshold. Maybe he doesn't want a dog to come near him. So the issue isn't my dog. The issue is a dog who doesn't know boundaries. If, I'm protecting the, if, if he's protecting his property, I'm going to decrease that visual territorial. I'm going to decrease that by covering the windows with window film or, not, or managing him outside so he's not out there doing perimeter watch. If it's number three as far as the people, I'm going to teach him that I'm not weak. How do I do that? Follow through, submission. What's submission look like? This is what submission looks like. Submissive body language is volunteer lowering of the head and body towards the ground while approaching or interacting with someone who the dog views has authority. Has authority. So what's authority mean? Now think about authority. Authority is the power or right to give orders, make decisions, and enforce obedience. That's authority. You got to gain submission. This dog right here, and the one I'm going to show you, the same one, you're going to see submission as, as very important. You got to get it. Some dogs, you get it naturally, meaning through temperament. Some dogs, you have to gain it. Strong will, dominant, those dogs, you need to get submission. This is why the majority of the dogs that I get in my one-on-one -on -one in my class are strong will dogs. Treats don't work. They're strong will and they're aggressive. They're thinking one step ahead of the owner. They're forward thinkers. So it's very, and treats won't work. Again, this is all I get, people. I could show you hundreds of videos of this, not just three or four. So this is how you, this is what submission looks like. But what you're not seeing here, when I first touched this dog, this dog was ready to bite me. This dog was ready to bite me when I first touched him. That submission. Head coming down voluntarily. He's submissive. He almost got me. I had to tell the owner to pull him to him. I, I, as soon as I touched his neck, this dog's mouth closed, and he was almost ready to nail me. So this dog was aggressive towards two things. The way he managed it, looked out the window, looked out the people, and submission. And a little bit, he went hands-on a little bit, but that's what most of us men do. So we t I teach him not to go hands-on. And then I teach him to follow through. No neck pressure around his neck, and we want submission. Now, a lot of the times, a lot of trainers will say, it looks like you beat the dog. Let me tell you something. 
this dog has no morals. He will bite somebody, not just that dog, but other dogs. They have no morals. In Minnesota, December 11th, a teenager was killed by a dog, a German Shepherd, with IPO training, which is aggression training. He killed. They have no morals. December 11th, Minnesota. Look it up. They have no morals. You have to teach them to be submissive, not mechanical, not with a treat. It is imperative to stop the dog aggression. Follow through, respect, submission. The opposite of aggression is submission. Loyal dogs, you're not going to get them to like anybody. Submission won't help. Loyal dogs only love the people they're bonded with. Does it matter if you got submission or not? That's the disclaimer I'm going to give you with loyal dogs. You have to identify loyal dogs. If you don't know how to identify loyal dogs, then please let me know. If you're a trainer and you don't know, please let me know. You have to know what a loyal dog does. They have two temperaments. They can be submissive, but they're still not going to like you. Those are your guard dogs. Those are your truly hard protection dogs. So it's very important to identify a loyal dog because treats or not even submission won't help. you got to break the bond. How do you break the bond with a loyal dog? You play with them. You play with a ball. You play with them. You take them for long walks. You can spend time with them. You play with them. How do you be a loyalty towards a person? You spend time with them. You communicate with them. Emotional. Emotional time with them. You communicate with them. That's how you build loyalty. You follow through. You follow through. You follow through. All right. Tim, thank you for watching. Susan, thank you. I know. Echo, thank you for watching. Allison, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope I didn't miss anybody. Now, look, I know this is going to be this is a hot topic around the country. It's a hot topic worldwide. But I know I'm going to get a lot of replays on this, and I'm fine with that. And I might have... But I have to say this. I got I to gotta go out there and show you that it works. Dog reactivity, very, very important. Look at the five things that you need to focus on. Go back and watch my replay to see it. Go back and see it. These are five very important things. I'm giving you this information free. If you go to a trainer and they're using treats and you think it's going to stop the, the, the aggression, be careful. Trainers, we have liability. Don't tell these people that they're not, the dog's not going to be reactive or it's fixed. Don't do that. Teach them how to manage those. Manage that dog. I'm giving you free advice that's helped me for a very long time. I've got proven I, over and over, video, video. Loyal dog is different. We talked about that last week when I talked about aggression. You have to build loyalty with them. Break that loyalty. When the owner's there, he's submissive and meek, but he won't be with you. All right? The opposite of aggression is submission. You're welcome, Chad and Stacy. You're welcome. I appreciate you. Uh, thanks for the video this week. Uh, you're welcome, Alex. I appreciate that. Uh, you, you're welcome. Uh, go back to my uh, replay. Watch what I have. Uh, let me. Uh, pennies in a can. Really quick, you guys. This is something that's very important. I got this on here. Two things. Pennies in a can. That causes a dog to be very wired. Stop doing that. I had a dog uh, in a couple weeks ago who the owner used pennies in a can. The dog was terrified of everything. If your dog um, is predisposed to handle stress with aggression, you're stressing him out. He's going to be aggressive. If he's predisposed to handle stress with submission, you're making him a fearful nutcase with pennies in a can. Stop doing that. All right? Don't do that. Uh, you follow through. Very important. Yelling. Yelling does the same things that pennies in a can. You yell at a dog, he wires him. It wires him submissive and wires him aggressive. Stop doing that. Very, very important. Stop yelling at a dog and stop throwing stuff that, that make a lot of noise. It causes them to go crazy, you guys. Crazy. Uh, your goal is to stop it. Manage it. Pressure down. You tell them to do something, you do it. Uh, go back to submission. I think I got everything. Boy, was that a lot. Hour and five minutes. I had to talk fast. There's a lot to unpack here. Stop using neck pressure. If your dog's aggressive, you want to get away from neck pressure. Their brain tells them to pull in the face of aggression. Go to the head halter and to off-leash. All those videos, I was right. My goal is off-leash at that point. Stop all neck pressure. Pinch collars. Come on, people. 
When are you going to evolve? Yeah. Stop using pinch collars. If your trainer's using pinch collars, why can't I do off-leash? Let me see your dog doing off-leash and bite work without anything around their neck, especially a shock collar. Wait a minute. I'm going to you for training. You set the standard of, of, of your training. Let me see your dog. No shock collar, no, no co nothing around their neck, off-leash obedience. Giddy up. Start holding these trainers at a high standard. Start holding me. Challenge me. There's nothing wrong with that. You're only going to make me a better trainer. Even if you're negative, even if you talk bad about me, I don't care. You're only making me a better trainer because I'm just going to do better with your, with, with your negativity. Trust me. Very important. Get out there. Very important. Uh, Judith, thank you for watching. Uh, Monica, thank you for watching. Sarah Carter, great info. You're welcome, Sarah. I want to say hello to James. James, if you're watching, hello. If you're watching my replay, hello. All right? You know who I'm talking about, James. James, very important. I like you, kid. You're a good kid. Uh, very important. Uh, Jennifer, thank you for watching. Go back to my replay, Jennifer. Uh, Leslie Warden, you, you're welcome, Leslie. You're welcome. All right, next week. Next week, I'm going to talk about First aid. Whoa, I got some good videos. Lori and, uh, and uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, Lori and, uh, uh, it starts with an R, I know right now. Uh, Randy. Lori and Randy, get, we got some good information. Um, we're going to talk about first aid, uh, basic stuff, and then maybe when the epidemic, when, the, uh, when we get this uh, uh, virus under control, maybe we'll, have a sh maybe we'll have something where you guys can come in and get certified with this, especially you trainers. You get certified on first aid. Now, look, I'm going to talk about dog first aid. If you're a trainer and you're working around people and you're under their control, you should know also first aid with people. You should know first aid with people, too. Just the basics. Of course, you know, get... You get the emergency there before the emergency gets there. Um, with a dog, you'd know first aid uh, before you take him to the emergency room immediately. And we're going to talk about that. Very important. I want to be able to give you an information. If anything ever happens, you've got to save your dog's life. Let's do this. Let's do this right now. And again, we're going to talk about how to stop that from happening before it happens so you don't set yourself up to fail for an emergency to occur. But there's still a lot of information to know about first aid. The following week, the following week, so first aid next week, the following week will be, will be uh, separation anxiety and emotion dependency. I break it up into two categories because, because there is two categories. Uh, I don't see a lot of separation anxiety, believe it or not. What you're going to see through this epidemic, uh, uh, you, with, with this virus, since everybody's been inside, what you're going to see is emotionally dependent dogs. And that we have to break emotionally dependency. And I'm gonna, we're going to talk about that. So that's in two weeks. So start telling people. Like and share my page. Start telling them that Hector's going to be talking about first aid next week. And then the following week, separation anxiety. All right? Very Im important. Casey even threw it at me. Come on. Casey was pressuring me. Come on. I need, I need one on separation anxiety and emotional dependency. You know which one I'm talking about. All right? So very, very important, you guys. First aid next week and then separation anxiety and emotional dependency the following week. Make sure if I got any questions. Uh, Tracy Reese, thank you for watching. Hector, thank you for watching. Got, got guy with the same last name. Allison, let me get these... Uh, a few questions. Randy, thank you, Lori. Uh, Allison, how do I get my dog to not become reactive and bark at people and dogs in the kennel? Now, look, in the kennel, he may feel what? He may feel cornered, Allison. So one of the things that even I do, because my dog feels this way sometimes, is I cover the kennel with a sheet so they don't see people or dogs. Allison, that's a way to manage it. Now, go back to the five things that I talked about, and maybe one of those is causing that. One of the things, and I'm, I'm not... The one of the be very important with this, Allison. Make sure nobody is correcting the dog inside the crate. Make sure nobody corrects the dog inside the crate. If you correct your dog in the crate, your dog's going to see that as a safe haven and then be aggressive and feel cornered in there. Then they become aggressive. If not, then it's being it's being protective of its area. So you cover the windows. No different than you cover the crate with a sheet or something. All right. Very good question. I like that. Uh, he jumps on the sides because he sees them. Cover the crate. Yeah, all that to you too, Hector. 
Uh, Tracy, we love watching your energy, Hector. Thanks for keeping our community safe. Amen, Tracy. And you kept it safe for many years with Lansing Police Department. I appreciate that, Tracy. You and your husband both did. Uh, Angela, thank you for watching. Uh, let's see, Rochelle, thanks so much for the great info. Uh, Tracy, you have a consulting uh, business too. Uh, Tracy Consultants, uh, Reese Consulting. So uh, you guys go back, go back to her uh, homepage if, if you want to know a little bit about self-defense and some of the other stuff that she teaches, elderly abuse and everything like that. Very, very good speaker, Tracy is. Uh, Angela Maloney, thank you for watching. Uh, Missy, I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Allison. Good timing, very good timing. Uh, Judith, I love you too. I love you too. Uh, should you not tell your dog to down while it's in the crate? Um, you shouldn't because it's not going to. It, and then you can't follow through. If you follow through, you got to open the cage, and now it's it, a whole vicious circle. Just manage it by covering the uh, crate. I should have you clarified he, doesn't, he does it outside the kennel. Outside the kennel, that means in the open area. That means he's doing perimeter watching, Allison. If he's doing perimeter watching, then you have to manage him. All right, go back to the management situation. Uh, if, I'm, if I didn't clear that up, Allison, send me a message. Uh, last week, I got a bunch of messages. I just couldn't answer all of them because I got, I got pretty much uh, flooded with them. But I got, I got the ones. Um, but anyways, very, very important. Uh, you guys, like and share my video. I want to help as many people as I can out there. How to get respect. What does submission look like? Submission, people think it looks like he's abused or he's afraid. It's submission. They're, you have control over them. A dog who's extremely aggressive, you want submission. Come on. They shouldn't be looking happy when, when, they're, when they think they're going to overprotect you. Come on. You've got to be able to call your dog back in the face of aggression. If somebody comes in your yard, you better, your dog better come to you. You don't want them out there. A dog can be B. You want your protection near you. If there's people that can come on your property without your permission, like a police officer, a letter carrier, utility worker, and he's aggressive, you got to have enough control to say, come, and he comes to you, and he sits next to you so you can grab him. You're not going to get that with, you're not going to get that with a treat. You're going to get that with submission. Very important. Recall. That's why I showed you my dog, my video of me and my dog. I got submission. Now, no neck pressure, verbal control. Very important. All right. Then separation anxiety. If I don't have any questions, which I don't hear, uh, what helps with jumping up for affection? Uh, Matt, go back to my, my website. I have two flyers on my training and uh, training flyers. Go back. There's two flyers that you need to read to answer that. To, to, to read to answer that. Uh, let me get my glasses back on. Uh, Tim, Tim Irish, thank you for watching. Uh, Angela, Hector, my dog is great in the crate, but larger pen. All he does is jump and whine. Now, Angela, uh, have a crate where their back shouldn't touch the top of their body. If it's too big, they're going to gain all that energy. You're right. Very good. Too much energy. We're going to talk about that next week in separation, anxiety, emotion, dependency, because some of this you have to crate your dog, and you need to know what size of crate you have. Very important, because too big a crate, he just developed a lot of energy. But cover the crate, too. Cover the crate helps. Uh, cover the crate, too, helps. Let's see here. Tim Irish, it's O'Neill. Ah, that's who it is. Got a new Jim and Shepard. Just cyber. Hey, O'Neill, thank you. Uh, Tim, thank you for watching, my friend. Hey, Tim, I have some replays on how to raise a perfect puppy. And, and uh, uh, very, very important on that. So go back to my replay and watch that. How to raise a perfect puppy. And I have another one, how to train a how to train a puppy. Go back to those two, and then you and I have a meeting when this dog turns five months, Tim. Don't, don't turn away. You and I have a meeting when this dog turns five months. I, I, will make, I will make it work. I love you, buddy. I will make it work. You're a good man. Uh, Judith, I'm going to rewatch. Came late. Yes, Judy, go back and watch. So if you don't have any other questions, if you do, go back to my replay and watch it. I'm over 15 minutes. It's my day off. I get to relax. I get to relax finally. I'm telling you, it's been crazy for the last month without a day off. So anyways, very important. Any questions, feel free to let me know. Message me, text me, like and share my page. Have a good week, you guys. Please have a good week. Stay safe when you're out there. Have a good week. I love you for watching my show. I love you for being here for me all the time. I love you for coming back. Next week is going to be a great show on first aid, first aid. 
We'll see you next week. Next week.